Welcome, everyone. <clears throat> Today I'm going to make a Rails app from scratch. Um, and I'm going to do Rails and then the back end server part, um, and then I'm going to do the front end part um, in the browser. And the application I'm going to make today is based on uh, peep code screencasts. This is a really cool website that has a bunch of um, professionally produced hour, hour and a half long screencasts. And I've watched a lot of these, and but I always forget which, which ones I've seen. So I want to make an application that lets me track which ones I've watched. Huh. And so this is actually what it's going to end up looking like. Uh, it has a list of all the videos that you can watch. And when you click on one, it marks it as watched and uh, saves it to a database. So when you come back, it's still the same. And to do this, I'm going to use a gym I created that you can use at home. <laughs> gym install peep code, the peep code gym I made. That's so the first thing I'm going to do is um, generate a new Rails application. I would call it video tracker. <coughs> and then, oops. I want to install my uh, peep code gem so we can see what it does. The peep code gem basically goes this page and takes uh, it and returns some JSON. So to install gems, you add them to your gem file and then run bundle or bundle install, and that will install the gems for you. Uh, while it's doing that, I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to start up the Rails server uh, just to see what we have right out of the box on a new Rails application. Uh, what? Usually there's a welcome to Rails page. Yeah, three thousand five. That's what mine did the other day. Okay, well, that doesn't matter. We actually are going to want to get rid of that. So that that page is public index, and we want to make a new index. I mean, a new uh, default page. So I'm going to set our root route. to uh, the welcome controller. The next page is kind of just a convention of Rails. And then I'm going to create that controller with that controller action. <coughs> OK, I'm just baffled. I don't know, it's not, no, it's not displaying anything. <coughs> okay, well, well, while it's not working, let's, I want to show you how the peep code gen is going to work. Start, start the Rails console, and that will give us access to the whole Rails environment, and the peep code gem gives us this class screencasts, which returns a bunch of JSON data. And you can look at one of them. Uh, we've got title, uh, a link to the image, and a, a link to the actual screencast. So this is the data we're going to be using in our application. And I want to, what I want to do is import this data into a database. Right now, it's just um, it's in this gem, but it's not in our database. And I'm going to create a database table called video, and it's going to have the same attributes: title, image, link. And I also want to be able to 
to say whether or not I've already watched it. When you create a column watched, then that's a boolean, which accepts only true or false values. Uh, this Rails G model will create a model class and a database, a migration to create a database table. You can see uh, it created a migration to add a table, uh, table to our database, and it created a model for us. Um, I'm going to migrate the database. Okay, so now we have this, we have uh, videos. I want to import all of our videos. Um, I'm going to make a rake task to do this. And this requires the Rails environment, so I get access to all of my classes in the PCode gym. Then I can get all the screencasts from PCode. And for each of them, I want to create a new video. And so that should, that should create uh, a bunch of videos. Let's see if that works. No. <coughs> okay. Now if we go back to our console, you probably see that there are now 82 videos in our database. So uh, yay for that. Now one problem we have is if we run, oops, if I were to run rake import again, it would, it would bring in another 82 uh, videos and we would have duplications. So what I want to do is make sure that we don't allow duplications in our database. And what, how I'm going to do that is use a test-driven approach. Uh, thanks from Noah for helping me uh, figure this out. Uh, here at CV, we use, or I guess we've decided to use RSpec as our um, testing framework. So to install RSpec, uh, we add it to our gem file and install it. <laughs> so now I'm going to uh, write a new test for a, a model. Um, and all of our tests require this spec helper and then in our spec we have blocks that say describe and then um, basically specify how the behavior of how our application is going to work or how the object is going to work. Okay, so I don't want it to allow duplicates. What I'm going to do is create a video. and then create another video with the same link. And basically, I want to assert that the number of videos is one, even though I tried to create two 
because the database or uh, active record prevents us from creating a duplicate record. Um, and I'll run our spec here. Oops. This spec should fail because I haven't written any code to prevent duplications in our database. And there we go. Uh, one failure. We got expected one video to exist. We got two. So now I'm going to go into my uh, the class for a video and. Add this method, which tells Ruby, uh, this is Ruby preventing us from creating and saving a record that has the same link as a, another record. So if I run the test, the test again, it should pass. So every time you run test, it doesn't go back on the database. That's right. It creates a test database. Right, it's a temporary allocation. Right, right. It spins up a, a separate environment mm -hmm. and, and loads in a new database. Yeah, you can do tricks like that with the Firebase. They go back. That's a cool one. That's all that. Right. Exactly. So now that we have our, our database and preventing duplicates, um, I'm going to go ahead and move on to accessing this data over the web because we need to get we need to get this data into our application somehow and that's going, going to be done in a controller so I'm going to create a new file called controller oops and all rails controllers inherit from application controller and this controller is <laughs> only going to respond to requests for JSON and I want an action that allows me to get all of the videos in JSON form. So this should, whenever we call this action videos controller index action, we'll fetch all our videos from the database and render them in JSON format. No, this uh, this is new in Rails three one, I think. These are responders. Right. So theoretically, now I could um, hit this up. Are you not running? Okay. Start the server first, and. This is right here is our URL for uh, our application, and then this videos controller. So that's what we want to see. Uh, unfortunately, we get we get the code for the error page because we haven't defined a route to this yet. And this. So I'm going to add the resources videos, which gives us basic access to all these methods uh, on the videos resource. And they'll call back into our controller code looking for, uh, for methods. So now we want, when we run curl, we get our big list of JSON. Can you curl did you, sure, uh, sure. Uh, 
curl curl is a way to send an HTTP request just from your command line. You can send git, post, put, delete, all the methods um, from the command line. So I'm basically simulating how our front end app is going to be interacting with the server. The front end app is going to be sending HTTP requests to these same resources. So if you stand there that you're typing in an address in the browser, <laughs> you're going to get you're going to get that same response, but in command uh, line, it's just going to maybe turn to the raw the raw HTML. So like you, you're just going to see raw HTML. You know, uh, interesting thing about this is it's a, it's a browserless browser. So like browsers by default will will stash cookies on your on your local thing, but Chrome doesn't. And so I actually found a nice exploit on the problem. Uh. HoustonCitySearch.com, they had a vote for your best, your favorite restaurant or vote for your favorite bartender. And the way they were actually evaluating uh, recycled votes was using cookies. So all I had to do is run an internet loop and then some curl, and my agreement was now the number one bartender in the people. Okay, so, so curl, <laughs> uh, curl does the same thing as just visiting this URL in the browser. If you can see, this is our the same exact JSON that we received on our curl. Uh, the next resource that I want to be able to access is just one video at a time. Uh, so we would be doing something like uh, something like that, where we specify the ID of the video. Uh, we get another error there because. We haven't implemented that action in our controller yet. So the show <laughs> method is, is the, um, the standard resource action for showing one record. And the UR will pass in this parameter ID, which we use to get our video. and respond with it. So now we should be able to get just one at a time. So if we look at our, our app that we want to make, um, we now have the ability to fetch a, whole, a list of all of the, uh, the videos using our index action. But we still need to be able to update whether we've watched it or not. When I click on one of these, I am indicating, yes, I've now watched it. If you can tell, red, red means unwatched, green means watched. And that's stored in the database. So whenever you come back, it's still there. Now, in order to, uh, to update records, the standard action is update. <laughs> Pretty simple. So with update, what we want to do is grab our video again uh, using the same, uh, same strategy as for show. And then we want to call update attributes. And we're only wanting to update the watched attribute. And we're going to expect a parameter passed in called watched. Okay. Update attributes is going to set the value of watched and then call save and save in the database. We also only want to allow certain values for this. So this is, if you remember watched is a boolean. So we want only want to accept true or false. Boolean, again? Boolean means true or false. <laughs> okay, so on this line, we're saying if our parameters are true or false, we'll update. Um, if not, if we send in some random thing like uh, the word hedgehogs or something, um, nothing will happen here. Oh. 
One and zero are both true, I think. In, in the movie. Well, active record is, is what's what's doing it. So, um, the, so the the reason the reason I actually I'm not, I'm not doing this to enforce database constraints, but if someone passes in something else, I want to I want to render um, nothing with a status of. 304, something like that, so that we can tell the user that they've requested a resource and try to do something with it that is not allowed. So we didn't modify it, we're just returning back to them. Nothing. Uh, there was another point real quick is that the active record makes the type. Yeah. So yeah. actually, active record is actually already taking care of the type checking as well. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is um, test whether I can update the watched column, true or false. Um, and to do that, I'm going to use the HTTP method put, which maps to the update action here. And if I, if I run curl on, on this resource for the second video, this is using git, and you notice it returns watch is null. And this is the notation for specifying the method and then specifying the data that you want to pass in as parameters. Remember, our controller action is requiring a watched parameter right here. <coughs> and then I'll give Okay. Look at our. If you look at our server, we received this put request. Um, we loaded it in the video. We updated the watched. We set it to true, and then we saved it. Oh, that's the SQLite, right? Right. So, so now, if you look at it here, we have uh, watched. It's true. So we're actually building the, the back end section of this. We can get a list of all of our videos, one of them, and, and update the watched column. So now we want to move into um, implementing this using uh, all AJAX calls and uh, introduce backbone JS. Now, I, I, when I make applications, I want to make them responsive as possible, so you can use them on the iPhone or the iPad, or whatever format you like. So I use um, Twitter Bootstrap. <laughs> That's what Twitter Bootstrap does? I've seen that several times. Twitter Bootstrap, yeah, it's, it's like it's, we, it's like the designer. We actually use Twitter Bootstrap in auto.com auto to make uh, it adjustable. Oh, okay. It kind of makes it easier for you to make the design work in most of the screen. So we, we add in Bootstrap. <coughs> and then. Bootstrap like mobile development. So it's a good way Bootstrap is just a wrapper of media queries. Yeah, exactly. And then um, I'm going to generate a Twitter Bootstrap uh, layout for our for our web page. I'm pretty sure this is the right command.
We want fixed. Um, I need to restart my server now. We brought in those new, new gems and style sheets. Okay, so this is this is the basic Twitter bootstrap you're gonna see when you create a new project. Um, it's nice and responsive, and what we're looking at is, is editing the content in this section. So for now, let's just forget about all these uh, sidebar things. When I made our, our welcome controller, uh, it generated for us this file that you see here. So we see on our application. And we want to replace this with um, the title and then we're going to have a list and a, a global wrapper for this whole thing. And that's all the HTML I'm going to write for this app. <laughs> and now we see our title, and we're going to use we're going to use JavaScript to fill in uh, the contents of this screencasts list. Uh, and we're going to use this welcome JavaScript, except I want to move it. I don't want to use CoffeeScript, just playing out JavaScript. Um, and then the next thing I want to do is install um, Backbone.js for, for handling our, our AJAX and rendering of our, our views. And luckily, you can do that manually, it's pretty easy, but there's also a really nice gem for it. Bang dollar sign means last file. So now I'll install my gem and then what this is going to do is install the backbone JavaScript library. It's going to install the underscore JavaScript library and I think also the JSON2 library. We're going to have to restart our server. This doesn't work. Um. Okay. No. All right, we were using this Safari. Need to get. Did I install Backbone? There we go. So now we have Backbone installed, and I hadn't refreshed the browser yet. I just need to refresh. So I don't like Safari's developer things very much, but the Chrome's not working right. Chrome's is the best. Like Firebug's nice, but Chrome Chrome is way better. Except it doesn't work right now. So. <laughs> so I'm gonna do everything in our our welcome JavaScript and um, make sure we load jQuery. Um, before we do anything. This is kind of standard. There's other ways to, to do this, but we make sure that the, the whole document's ready. And then in Backbone, we're going to use Backbone to fetch our JSON into, into model on the client side. No, I don't need any Ruby in this. So first thing we'll do is create a model. Um, screencast. 
and we're going to extend this from a plain backbone model. And that gives us a couple special features that we'll see in a little bit. Like, I'm going to create, I'm going to create a new screencast to show you how, how it works. In Backbone with models, you can set the URL for a resource, and then once you set set the URL, you can call fetch. And what fetch does is fetches it, grabs the JSON from it, and uh, populates the object with that JSON. What this is going to do is make a new screencast object, get its JSON, and then log it to the console. I guess I just don't know how to use. This is using Safari console. It's got the Chrome, Chrome just did not work. Yeah. yeah. See, it's just not, it's not doing, it means local virtual host. Okay, Chrome is just not working. Okay, well we can, we can still use this. So here it's logging that, I got the console to work in Chrome. This is the object that told it to log. It's actually pulled in this data on screencast number two. So now we have this JavaScript object um, that we can do things to. Uh, we can call git to get its title. There you go, design bundle. That's the first or the second one. Um, so I, now that we've done, we've got the concept of how one model works. I'm going to introduce uh, Backbone Collection. So Collection does, I think, extends from model itself, but also introduces some new things. Okay, so we'll do the same thing. a new collection of screencasts and then give it the, the URL of all of our videos. So what this is going to do is fetch all of the screencasts on the server and log them. So here we go. This is our collection object and it has all of our models. It created a new model for every um, every screencast object. All these models have attributes. What I actually forgot to do is pass in the type of model that this wants. So you see, uh, 
models are all the background model. If I refresh, they should all be screencast objects now. All right, these are screencast objects now. Okay, so what, you say? How are we gonna get this? Yeah, how are we gonna get this on the page to turn the markup? Well, uh, so far we've been using backbone objects for the data, and we're also using backbone objects to create um, DOM elements. And we'll, we'll do that with uh, a backbone view object. What's the R? It is just declaring a new variable. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, wow. Uh, what? Did I do something horrible? Okay, huh. <laughs> so, with the view, we're going to give it a, a property called tag name, and it's going to be a li object. So, we have on our page a ul tag, an unordered list. And into it, we're going to insert a big list of screencast views, which are all list items. And we want to teach it how to render itself into the page. So we're going to What I'm doing here is uh, this is the object screencast view, and its element is going to be this list item. So whenever I render, it's going to create a list item, and then set its text to a screencast. So what I'm going to do when I fetch this one model is say, declare a new new view and pass in this model. And then All right, you see that we, we're uh, rendering that view and appending it on there. Right. Okay. Now, what we don't want to do this for just one. We want to do it for, for all of these, right? All these screencasts. Um, so we're going to use un the underscore library. And for each of these models, we're going to create a new screencast view and render it to the page. Whoop. Hey, whoa. Ha 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 ha. Okay, I'm, I'm rendering it to both UL elements, but we just wanted to do this, this screencast one. Or is that the name of it? Here's a markup. Oh, it's class. <laughs> oh, 
we go, a screencast. But we, we actually wanted to display the real name. So I'm going to go back to our render function and teach it how to do that. So instead of text a screencast, I want to do text this.model.get title. And because we pass in a model uh, right here um, into our new screencast view, we get access to this.model. And that model has a title. So now we're, we've got all of them rendering in there like that. Uh, real quickly, I'm going to go and, and demonstrate how to style this. I'm going to make the default color of these uh, red. That's a little better. Maybe uh, Okay, I'm happy with that so far. Um, I also want to be able to indicate that some of these are, have been watched. So they're going to have a class of watched. And this is SAS. This is SAS, not less. So SAS compiles down into CSS. Yeah, it gives us this nesting, it gives us this, which is just awesome and wonderful. Um, it gives us all kinds of things. So, so now if I have a, if I have an li of class watched, it should have uh, green text. I'm actually just going to test that out um, by adding that class to all of my views. There we go. So that's what would have happened. Now, I actually do want to add this class to some of my views, and those are the views that have been watched. Um, right. So I'm going to just do a quick if statement. If model I get watched, I'm going to add the class. There we go. Remember we set this as watched earlier on the curl, the curl. So, so far so good. This is doing exactly what we want. Um, next, if you remember, we had an image in here. And oops. So I'm going to append an image to each of these list items, and its source is going to be uh, no. This is this is a JavaScript object. Yeah, it's an object literal there. And then I just want to do. Not this. View element. And then before I do that, let's give it a little bit of style for each of these. Actually, I'm going to give it a When I want to set something to an absolute position, I have to set its parent parent element to a relative position for that to work. Uh, 
Hatch egg. Should be what we want. Or not. Okay, well, I'm confused. I'm not getting any errors. I'm going to go ahead and just uh, skip this image part for now because I want to demonstrate how to um, indicate that you've watched it and save. So in our screencast view, we have... No, that's, this is creating a new image and then assigning its attributes. Yeah. Um, so screencast, another big part of Backbone is uh, events. Backbone gives you some great conventions for building events. And for any view, we can create an events object. Uh, so this event is when someone clicks it, and then we can pass in a function like toggle watched. So this is when we click on an uh, on one of these videos, we want it to toggle its watched state. And I'm going to define that method. Uh, before we do any saving uh, to the database, I just want to show that this how this works. Um, so I'm going to just have it toggle this class. So whenever you click one, it's going to just uh, toggle its class. Um, and that just basically tells it to change colors. It's not saving anything to the database. If we refresh, uh, we don't have any special anything. So in order to save this, um, first I want to check what the, the current value of this, this object is. So If it's true, I want to set it to false. And if it's false, I want to set it to true. And then I want to save. Save is what uh, actually creates the AJAX request to the server and updates, updates the uh, database's attributes. So now when I click on them, they should persist. What? Yeah, a backbone save should do a put request back to our server like we showed before. Um, yeah. Here, look. We're adding error. So, we we specified the URL for our collection of data, but we never specified what the URL is going to be for each individual um, backbone model if we want to update them one at a time. Um, and so, what we do we do that in the, the model definition itself, and we just do. A, we just add a function uh, function on this object that says return okay, so the URL is going to be videos plus the ID of this model in .json. Yeah. 
there we go. Now it's saving to the database. Um, and that's all the functionality that we, we talked about at the beginning. Um, this this will persist. Now, if you put this up on a public facing site, someone could just come and uh, change your, your things. So you might want to put a password or something like that. No, it, these I mean these are all available at peepcode.com. No. I just scraped the, the the name, the link, the image. What I wanted. I'm gonna clean this up a little bit. Uh, We really don't want um, all of this in in this uh, callback function. That's just um, it kind of is destroying our object oriented uh, design here. And what Backbone does, there's a convention in the Backbone world uh, for creating a collection view. Uh, I'm almost done. Uh, which manages. Um, the uh, the collection of things of of views. So what was the name of our thing? Screencast was our element. Um, we could have a a method like this that basically performs all of this logic. What? I'm not using markers. I'm not. And This is basically just abstracting that logic into a another object that knows how to how to add things to that list. And, uh, I'm probably totally wrong about this thing. Okay, it works. Okay, um, so that's pretty much it for how how we're using Backbone so far. Um, one other thing that we're using Backbone for is. Um, observing uh, events. There's a, a pattern called the observer pattern that Backbone uses a lot that a lot of other mobile frameworks like iOS use. And we're getting that into auto.com uh, gradually. So uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed. Next time pre-recording, we'll watch that. Without the hiccups, you don't find yourself older and harder. That's what makes drugs nice.